Hi students, today we are going to be looking at my process of how to create a pop art inspired work with the elements of food. So the tools that you're going to need is a nice pack of acrylic paint, some watercolor paper, a ruler, some masking tape or paper tape, a nice chunky black marker, an eraser and a pencil. Some other tools that you might need is a plate or a tray to put your cup of water and paint brushes on. And of course, you can use different types and sizes of brushes, some tissues to clean your brushes, and a nice palette. To so let's get started. Now, prior to this video, I've already created three different sketches of the compositions that I would like to work with. These are just three different ideas that I had in mind. They're very quick sketches. As you can see, they're not very detailed, but these are going to show me how to work with the space that I am going to work with. Of course, you can use a visual guide. Uh, I just printed this off the internet to help me understand what images look like. Now, once I've got my three sketches, I'm going to choose one out of the three that I feel the composition is the strongest and work towards creating my final work with this sketch over here. So I'm choosing to do the sushi. I feel like that's an interesting composition to do. Now to start, I'm going to grab my watercolor paper, make sure it's on the correct side. When we start our project, the first thing we always do is create a border around our work so that we don't work outside of the page. An easy way to do this is to use our ruler. We're going to mark out two centimeters on each corner, like so. I'm just gonna place my ruler and mark it out and do this for every single corner of this watercolor paper. Now, once you marked all the corners, you are going to join the dots together. So with your ruler, you're going to place it along the dots. So that one has matched the one at the bottom. Draw a nice line that goes across. And we're going to repeat this on every single corner of the dots that we've created. Now that we have our page ready, we are going to transfer our sketch onto our final paper. Now you can see that the scaling is a little bit different. So of course, I'm going to have to draw my objects a little bit larger to fit this page. Now, when we're looking at how to scale our objects or how to draw our work onto our final paper, we can always look around us to see whether or not there are objects that are similar in size and in shape to what we are trying to draw. Here, I am going to use my masking tape to draw out my sushi because purely it is the, it's a circular object that I have around me. I could have just used a compass as well. Whatever it is that works for you all, look around you, there's always something to draw with. I'm gonna go in and draw the seaweed layer of my sushi. I'm going to do this freehand as I have a lot of control on my pencil. If you would like to practice your control on your pencil, of course, do it on a different piece of paper first and then transfer that onto your final work. So let's take this time as I'm finishing off my sketch to discuss pop art. Now, pop art is an art movement. Just in case you forgot what the term art movement means, it just means a specific style of art within a period of time. Pop art is actually one of my all-time favorite art movements because it is extremely expressive. This art movement emerged in the mid-1950s in Britain and eventually moved on to America and the rest of the world. 
It was born after a group of young painters, sculptors, architects, writers. They all gathered together to brainstorm ideas of how to incorporate pop culture within art. They basically wanted to break the traditional views of what fine art was because they wanted to incorporate elements of mass advertising, movies and celebrities, product design, comic strips, science fiction, and technology as well. One of the reasons why they wanted to develop this art movement was because they wanted to brighten the lives of people during that time. This art movement was actually a reaction of the Second World War. Therefore, artists during that time period like Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein, and David Hockney as well, they all wanted to create artworks that were colorful and expressive, that carried a tone of familiarity when it came to the subject matter that they chose, and so that people can have a sense of enjoyment while looking at their artwork. Now our next step is to prep our artwork before we start painting. As you can see, I am taping down my artwork with masking tape Masking tape is great to use because it does not rip the paper once you start peeling it off. It just holds down the paper nice and neatly so that once you start painting, your paper does not wrinkle. I am cutting off strips that are long enough to go across my page. And as you can see, I am going to line it up to the edge of my frame so that once I start painting, if I do go over the line, I'll end up painting on the tape rather than on my frame. So I'm just going to continue doing this to the rest of the page, making sure that I am aligning everything properly so that we can start to paint. So now we are finally ready to paint. I am going to use this bright lemon yellow to paint my background. With acrylic paints, you might have to mix a little bit of water with the paint that you're using straight from the tube just to loosen the consistency. Use another piece of watercolor paper to test out your colors, make sure that you're happy with the consistency, then go ahead and start painting the entire background, every spot and corner that you see nice and neatly with thin layers of paint. As you can see, I actually ended up painting over my lines a little bit, but that is okay. That is the whole reason why we taped our work down, so that while we're painting our backgrounds, we don't have to spend a lot of time trying to clean up our lines. We could just wait for our paint to dry and later on peel the tape off, revealing a very clean so now that I've completed the background, I am going to pick and choose different other elements on my page to start painting. I'm going to go with the chopsticks first, which means I have to mix a few colors or paints together to achieve the depth of color that I'd like. I'm going to start with yellow ochre, mix in a little bit of burnt sienna, and work on this color to see whether or not I get the color that I want. I can see that this is a color that I want, so I'm just going to go ahead and start painting within the lines, of course, 
making sure that I hold my breath where I'm painting very, very close to the line and continue this process on both of the chopsticks that I've drawn. Don't worry too much about staying within the lines. Of course, we should always try our best to do so, but we are all human. We're bound to paint outside of the lines sometimes. But the beauty about this art movement is that we are going to be outlining our work with a very bold black permanent marker. So that should hopefully cover everything. The next thing I'm going to do is this sushi up at the top over here. We're gonna start mixing different colors. This is my brilliant red. I'm going to add it into my yellow to see whether or not I get a sense of orange that I need. I am going to continue this process of mixing my colors. And one thing I failed to mention earlier is that you should always test out your colors. So once you get close to the colors that you would like, take a little bit of that paint and test it out on a piece of paper next to you. Again, I'm going to repeat this process of adding the colors that I need. I added a little bit of titanium white to see whether or not my color is going to be what I want. I'm continuing mixing my colors in together. I can see that it turned a little bit dark, so I'm going to add a little bit of my lemon yellow in to see whether or not that will tone down the pink that I have. And there we go just going to test it out one last time and I'm quite happy with that. That is going to be the color of my salmon so I'm going to go ahead and start painting that in. It's a punchy color of course salmon is a more subdued color in real life but we are going to go ahead and make our work a little bit more colorful. We're going to repeat this process painting all the areas that I have that has a salmon in, making sure that I am painting in all of the corners that I can see. I'm actually using a smaller paintbrush, which means that I will be able to reach smaller corners a little bit more, especially within the um, spaces in the middle of objects as well. It's okay if you paint and your pencil lines still show we are going to outline all of this. And again, this is the beauty of this project. Usually I would tell all my students to erase their pencil lines before they start painting because we could see the pencil lines underneath the paint. But for this specific project, it's okay if we do see those pencil lines because we are going to use our permanent marker to outline all of these areas once our painting has dried. For the rest of my painting, I am going to be continuing the process of mixing the colors that I need, testing it out on a different piece of paper, slowly painting the areas, holding my breath when I'm painting smaller sections so that I can paint within the lines and continuing this until I've completed my work.
So now that I've waited for my painting to dry, I am ready to outline my work. I am going to use my permanent marker just to test it out on the side, make sure my pen is working nice and well to outline this entire artwork. Now, when we outline our work, we need to make sure that our hands stay as steady as possible. And just like painting, it helps to hold your breath so that your hands stay steady. You're going to outline around all of the areas that you've painted. Try your best to stay on the line so you won't have any paint outside of the lines that you've drawn you keep your hands nice and steady throughout you're now going to continue this process going through the entire artwork going around all the elements that you have if you have to use a ruler do so if you have to go around areas where it's a little bit larger Hold your breath and then stop and then draw the rest of the line using the same process of holding your breath and just going for it. Now that I'm done outlining everything, I am going to use my permanent marker to create lines and dots all around my artwork so that it carries the essence of a pop art work. The final step to this artwork, once everything has dried off, is to peel the masking tape that we've placed on our work. As you can see, it is super satisfying. You just peel it off and we are able to have a really clean line that goes around our artwork. This project is one of my all-time favorite projects to do with my students because it really pushes your creativity. Once you follow the steps and understand the importance of planning, you will be able to achieve an artwork that is not only creative, but to the best of your abilities. So go ahead, try this out yourselves. Make sure you plan your work and you will be able to create an artwork that's inspired by pop art and food and something that you will be extremely proud of. Here you go, pop art and food.